Yeah. The question is, does candy like the mask? Ooh. Especially when you go to bed wearing it. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. right. Hey, you know what I should <laughs> too that's much a good idea. Yeah, this is a PG show, PG show, I'm oh, wow. yeah, I like <laughs> that. Producer that. coming in clutch. <laughs> Hey there, everyone, and welcome to GalaxyCon Live, where we bring the convention experience directly to you. I'm your host for today's panel, Mario Bueno. Since its debut in arcades in 1992, Mortal Kombat has left a bloody mark, not just on the fighting game genre, but on video game culture as a whole. And we have felt this impact for almost 30 years since its original debut. In that time, it has featured multiple spin-off pieces of media, as well as two multi-million dollar Hollywood films. But today, we are going to be focusing on the early years of the game itself. We are lucky to be speaking to some of the actors who digitized have brought to life for the purposes of very brutal, gory death <laughs> some of our favorite characters from the Mortal Kombat series. So without further ado, let's start bringing them to our virtual stage, beginning with one of the big bad bosses himself. You know them as Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. Please welcome Brian Glynn to our virtual stage. Hello, Brian. Hey, guys. How How's it going? Uh, it's great to have you here. Great to have you here. We are going to be bringing out some more of your compatriots. Please uh, don't tell them that they suck or cheese them with a hammer. <laughs> We'd really uh, appreciate that. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, thank you for, for being here. Glad to have you here. And we are also glad to have Jax himself from Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. Please welcome John Parrish to our virtual stage. Hello, people. How y'all hey. doing out there? Woo-hoo! Hello, hello. Glad to have you here. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing excellent. Doing excellent. Yourself? Uh, doing just fine. Excited for another fun panel talking about one of my favorite game series of all time. Joining us here on our virtual stage as well, you know them as Serena in Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero, Tanya in Mortal Kombat 4, and Sindel in Mortal Kombat 3. Please welcome Leah Montalongo to our virtual stage. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Good to be here. Great to have you here. Uh, we are very excited for today. Uh, joining us as well, we have another popular John from the Mortal Kombat series. You know them as Chameleon, Smoke, Noob Saibot, Rain, Ermac, Reptile, Scorpion, Classic Sub-Zero, and Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat 3. Please welcome John Turk to our virtual stage. Hello, hello. What's going on, everybody? Good to be here. Great to have you here as well, but we are not done yet because next up, we are also welcoming to our virtual stage Sonya Blade herself from Mortal Kombat 3 and 4. Please welcome Carrie Hoskins to our virtual stage. Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Great to have you back here at GalaxyCon, but we are not done yet because we also have Quan Chi and Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero. Cabal and Noob Saibot in Mortal Kombat 3, Baraka in Mortal Kombat 2, and Kano in Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 3. Richard Divizio, welcome to our virtual stage. Richard, how are you doing today? What's going on, everybody? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's going on? Hello, hello. So the gang is all here. And before we turn it over to our wonderful fans with their amazing questions, uh, just to kind of get us started for today, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the panel, uh, Mortal Kombat has spanned almost 30 years since its initial debut in arcades. And it has gone on to become one of the most preeminent pop culture franchises in the world. Uh, all of you have been involved uh, from the early years. And I, I wanted to get uh, a little bit of context, especially starting with you, Richard, since you've been with it literally since the beginning. Uh, at the time you were working on Mortal Kombat, did you expect it to really endure and expand as much as it has over the course of these past nearly 30 years? Uh, not really. Not really at all. I mean, um, you know, I grew up with uh, John Tobias and we uh, just it was like it was like working with with your your best buddy and working on a, a really cool project and uh, yeah we didn't really know you know what it was going to turn out to be but um, it definitely took the world by storm that's pretty much what I could say you know I was the second one film Daniel Pacino was the first one filmed so um, you know early on we were pretty much working out the kinks 
Um, you know, that's why, you know, I envy uh, uh, everyone here on the panel today, too, because a lot of the footage that's online of you guys is like really crisp and clear. And, um, you know, when you start looking back at the old footage of, of myself or Daniel, um, it's just the, the, the backdrops were really, really bad. And I, I really wish we had some sort of high definition back then, but we did not. Well, we are only a couple of years after you, so it wasn't that much. Much yeah, it wasn't wasn't mm -hmm. that long much after. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I, well, you know, um, you know, when uh, MK2 came out, uh, it was shot digitally uh, using a digital camera. The first. No, that was MK3. No, MK2. Hmm, John Tobias told me it was three. Yeah, it was MK uh, MK2. They went with a digital format. That's why you see when you uh, check out MK2, the colors are just way more br uh, vibrant. But, uh, you know, the first one was Hi8 videotape. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hi8 videotape, like, what's that? You know, but, um, yeah, by the time it got to the other games, it's like, man, I, I really wish that, I know, I know they were going to do, like, an HD project, but uh, that would be really cool if they did that today. So uh, I, I'll, I'll let some of the other guys talk, too, about it. But, uh, yeah, it was the second one filmed, and um, we learned a lot as we went on. Uh, so yeah, just to, to recap. So um, you know, when when you were working on it at the time, uh, did any of you you know really expect uh, the, the the franchise to to really go on uh, to become the pop culture juggernaut that it has and really you know expand into some of these side projects that I know a lot of you worked on, um, as well as you know everything that came after it. No, no, yeah. not at all. I mean, it it kept on turning into something else. When I came in at MK3 and it turned into a live tour and. And then I had my babies and took some time off and then recently put the costume back on and everybody was still there. It was, it's just been incredible. The fans have been incredible over the years. Yeah, I, I had no idea either because uh, I came in at three as well. And I was a policeman at the time and I really wasn't familiar with games at all just because I worked a lot. And um, I remember during filming, John Tobias said to me, you know, this is a really popular game. If you get a chance, stop in the arcade. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. But um, I found out real quick just how popular the game had become. And it was uh, pretty neat to be part of it, obviously. It's, it's probably lived into infamy now. And here we are 30 years later, and we're still talking about MK. So, And it's, uh, it's, it's actually recently drawn me into it. Um, I, I, I've always been into it, but not to the extent I am now. I'm, like, buying Sub-Zero masks, and I'm collecting things. And it's, uh, <laughs> nice. I never thought I would do that. I just bought the most cool, badass mask. That I'm like, man, this thing is awesome. I'm going to start collecting masks. It's oh, there we go. Gonna... See Richard oh, in the yeah. background there. I don't know if you guys saw this, but so this mask right here, I don't know if you could see it. But, oh, God, what the... So this mask is um, the you same. Ex it's, the, it, it's the same exact mask uh, that we use for Baraka. It's not the same exact one I used. That one was thrown out and that one's gone forever. But this is the same manufacturer mask. And then we ended up just putting like fingernails. Uh, um, Ed Boone, John, put, they put fingernails on the ends of this. But this mask is so hard to find. Uh, I actually got this through a mask collector. This is from 1983. And it's by a French company called uh, Cesar, uh, C-E-S-A-R. So hard to find this mask. But uh, he had like four of them, this collector, and he was gracious enough, and he gave this to me out of his personal collection. So I'm so glad to have it. Um, I think there were four of them. There was a red one, a glow-in-the-dark one, like a cream-colored one, and a black one. But just to have this in the collection is amazing. Yeah. 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 Your really... head rich and... <laughs> I should wear this. I should wear this at one of the shows, but... Um, and you guys know when I wore this mask, it was so hot wearing this thing, especially oh, yes, jumping around and doing all the moves. But this was killer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm under just a bunch of lights here for, for my own backdrop. And I'm already, you know, I had to turn on the, the air conditioner just so I wouldn't melt in between uh, recordings today. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, yes, I, I don't even know if I can fit into this thing anymore. But <laughs> one, the, one day the question, I'm going to Rich, is, yeah. the question is, does Candy like the mask? Ooh. Especially when you go to bed wearing it. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. right. Hey, you know what I should? <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
Sweetheart. PG show. Um, oh, wow. yeah, I like <laughs> that. Yeah, in clutch. Sure. Oh, oh, bless. We, we always have a good time here at Galaxy Con. <laughs> you know what's weird though? I got. I will tell you this. So, and and I know you guys will laugh. So when people meet me, you know, I always go off of you know, Kano. That, you know, is is my signature, you know, face and, you know, all that and stuff like that. And, but people will meet me or someone tell them, you know, hey, he's in Mortal Kombat, whatever. And they're like, oh, you, you look like Baraka. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I do? How the hell do I look like Baraka? Baraka looks like this mask. You know, like, so, you know what I thought? I thought maybe That's one day would I, may, maybe, you know, because right. going like that, you know, I was going to get some, uh, some of those ear attachments that uh, like Spock wears yeah. and maybe, maybe I'll dress up like that one day as Baraka. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> there we go. Get, get some uh, high end prosthetics. Just go on out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, Leah and Brian, we're still into to get your thoughts. So if I may popcorn over to you guys uh, for some thoughts about, you know, uh, whether or not at the time you thought this whole thing was going to explode into what it has. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't even know what it was at first. Like when they asked me to do it, I just, went there and kind of went with the flow. So I, I was, I'm still shocked that people are still as interested in to, as, as it today. But I think, it, I think the movies have really kind of helped keep it alive, you know? And I think that's what sparks the latest interest in the characters. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think um, for, you know, for me, you know, Brian and I were actually personal trainers at World Gym. Oh, wow. <laughs> Montrose in Chicago at the time, and we were friends with John Parrish. And so it's because of Jax that, uh, you know, we we got the jobs. I mean, they were looking for Thanks, a, they were looking for a king and a queen. And um, Brian and I were a couple at the time. And, you know, I just thought it was a like a, a really cool shoot. You know, I was 19 and um, I got to go to set and, you know, makeup on and make some money and have fun with my fiance. And, um, and then here we are all these years later and just kind of a quick uh, loop around. I actually was a party hostess at a video arcade called Hollywood Park in Tinley Park. And do you remember this, Brian? Yeah, I do, I do remember that actually for a very short period of time. For a short period of time. And um, so I would give, the kids would come in, they'd pay, you know, to get the tokens, play the video games. And I would give them their tokens and take their pizza order and go make their pizzas. And sure enough, we had just gotten an MK3 cabinet. And um, here they are, all these kids, I'm giving them their tokens. I'm standing in front of the cabinet that Brian and I are modeling on as I'm Sindel in this Hollywood party host taking the orders for these kids. They have no idea that I'm Sindel. And I go to the back kitchen and I make the pizza and I just do the deal. But um, who knew, you know, here we are all these years later and I have these amazing friends and we get to, you know, what I tell um, my, my close friends now, it's like, I'm a 46 year old yoga teacher. Like, you know, this is just the coolest experience to have this all these years later to uh, mm -hmm. be able to celebrate. Yeah. Leah and Brian, yeah. you know what's so funny is usually, you know, you have to have kids to keep you connected to your ex your whole life. And you guys have MK. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty I'm good, pretty good, good point there, Carrie. <laughs> well, and you know, actually, just to kind of just to kind of go on that, Brian and I used to play each other at home. Do you remember that? Oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I remember that. <laughs> I can't remember that far. Collective memory, huh? Yeah. Oh my God. I'll memory. <laughs> probably blocked it out. I'm guessing uh, it took probably That's took a lot of L's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who won most of the time. I, who, but, yeah. I just I just mash buttons when I play that game. I, I still run out of play. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I, I, like 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 we've been saying, you know, it's a uh, it, it's left a lot of memories for for people across generations, and I'm certain a lot of these folks are hanging out with us over in the chat. So this is the time. Let's open it up to our wonderful viewers. See what fan questions we have waiting in the wings for you. Uh, the first one is from Abdul. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest move for you to perform? Uh, I'll go first on that one. Um, hardest one for me to perform was when I had to do the kick from the this little stair he had me sitting on to get my hip bone on top of that wooden staircase that was rickety and then ed boone had to hold up a foot and be out of frame at the same time while i'm like <laughs> with the leg out that was by far the hardest for me 
Yeah, I'd have to say I'd have to go with John on that because there's video on YouTube of uh, me trying yeah. to do the, fly, the flying sidekick. You got a flying and, uh, sidekick. Yeah, and I had to balance on those stairs. And so, you know, Daniel was trying to hold me up, but I would fall off every time. So <laughs> I'm, I'm right with you, John. Yeah. I had to do the stairs, too. And that was for me, it was the bicycle kick. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think for me everything I did with that costume on was was difficult because everything had to be readjusted every time you made a move in that thing. So yeah, yeah, you know, pretty here. much anything I did was yep difficult. Yeah, I, for me yeah. it was um uh, I'm pretty good with kicks. So when I my leg would go high, the shoes that I had on the floor was slippery, and a lot of times my bottom foot would slip from underneath me, but I'd have to catch myself. That was the only thing I found was uh, getting to be a little bit of a job hazard so to speak was, was that my, my bottom leg would come flying out from underneath me sometimes leah had to do everything in a freaking huge 30 pound wig yeah, 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 yeah i was gonna say there is some footage where you see ed he's like you could he's showing me this front flip and he's he just does it you know and he's like looking at me like you know why can't you just do this front flip and and i talk about this because i i'm looking at him you know and i'm like you know, there's really not much I can do with this 30 pound wig. And so in fact, instead of that front flip, it's that Pratt fall and you'll see it's the classic Sindel is just going straight back. And the reason why she, I'm so straight is because the, the wig was just as much as the weight of my butt. So I couldn't even. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my God. That, fell. <laughs> and that was, that was not a Pratt fall. It was a splat fall. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> when we did uh, when we did Baraka, uh, you know the the blades on Baraka were basically just made of cardboard, like a like a like a mylar, and um, Baraka had to do like a swipe move. So I would do this swipe, but when you're you know you have cardboard in the wind, you know I would do it, and if I did it too fast, the cardboard would just bend. And, you know, so John had to keep readjusting it and inserting the uh, cardboard back into my arm because there were like these little slots. But, um, you know, like Brian was saying, I think, you know, when you're doing the wearing all the costume stuff, um, sometimes you got to do it slow and then maybe they'll speed it up or whatever. But um, I mean, you could, you know, break the costume when you're when you're doing mm -hmm. a backflip or you're doing something. And then, you know, you're like, oh, well, the, the, now my now my uh, my knives are broken. You know, let's glue them together. Mm -hmm. or, you know, just <laughs> nobody ever sees it. We saw it, though. You know. Yeah, and actually, before we move on to our next question, kind kind of a follow up to this. Uh, so, having having done cosplay for many years myself, still being very involved in the scene, at least behind the scenes, working with uh, a lot of events, uh, I, I definitely know I've had a lot of issues with certain costumes I've worn over the years. And it sounds like all of you have had various uh, issues with your costumes. Uh, are there any any costumes in particular, or like costume pieces uh, that that really just kind of it drove you nuts. <laughs> I mean, I Leah, me uh, 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 you, you already gave us the wig, me. unless there's something else uh, that you wanted to mention. <laughs> besides, besides the wig, I also at that time was fair, fairly thigh heavy muscular wise. And so anytime I did any of the kicks, Sal, or I think it was David McNich, would always have to come and adjust the leggings because those uh... costumes were not made by, you know, the costume makers, I think, to, like the, the level of what they were, were just, they would just slide constantly down. So yeah. The Maria was a piece of cake. I had like spandex on and Air Force Ones. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, my original costume was supposed to be like a, a karate gi with yellow and black. Oh wow! And I tried to keep telling the lady, I said, "This is not going to work," because. <laughs> It was like skinny boy pants on the ankle, so it was tight. And I was like, John, when you jump up and kick high, okay, it's like, instead of him slipping, I'm like, this is going to rip. Yeah. And the lady kept saying, oh, no, no, no. I said, oh, yes. I can feel the crotch. Remember, Rich? Mm -hmm. I can feel the crotch. It's, this is going to rip. No, it won't. I made this. I said, okay. And then John Tobias and then and then Danny said, Go ahead, John, just do the jump thing. And he knew yeah, you could see it in his face. Danny knew. The minute I jumped up, the leg went up, you can hear it. 
<laughs> the breeze is right there. I said, yep, there it goes. And that's why Jax has tights. <laughs> okay. People thought yeah. you know, it was invented that way. I said, no, it was supposed to be like everybody else, ninja style. I said, but it just doesn't work for somebody like me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and my, arguably my it was, made the look. So yeah, you know, it worked out very well for the character in the long run. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Kurt, go on. I, I kept telling the lady, I said, just go get me some tights, I'm fine. And like, uh, you know, leg warmers, I don't care. <laughs> okay, but this is not going to work. My ass is hanging out. <laughs> it's the, yeah, uh, the bonus content. Saw, yeah, the, the Shang Tsung costume for me was really uh, very uncomfortable. You know, I had like that floss running up the certain areas that it was very uncomfortable. So <laughs> it came up the front and up the back. And I said, uh, man, can we do something else here? And it just wasn't working very well. <laughs> All right. And I think uh, I think that pretty much covers us for this one. So <laughs> pun definitely not intended on that one. <laughs> so this next one is from Kevin. Uh, what was it like seeing your character on screen in action for the very first time. Actually, that that's that a very good one, Kevin. I'm curious about that one as well. For me, it was like, oh my gosh, the world suddenly makes sense. <laughs> All this stuff <laughs> we were doing in the studio. <laughs> mm -hmm. We finally have a background and we have opponents because we did everything on a green screen. So yeah, it was yeah. actually very uh, validating, I want to say, when we finally got to see ourselves in the in the video game. Yeah, yeah you I don't know, know about like, you guys, but did you find yeah. that um, when we were originally doing it, we were moving so slow, they kept telling me, slow down, slow down, slow down. And then yeah. I'm like, gosh, this is going to be really horrible. And then when I got to see the game and I saw my character for the first time, they, they actually speed it up to the speed it's supposed to be. But otherwise, they can't motion capture you. So for, for a lot of us, I'm sure, had the same problem where it's, it's really hard sometimes to throw a kick really super slow and the way they yeah. wanted it. So... When I went to see it on, on on the screen for the first time, I'm like, okay, I see what they did. So it was interesting yeah. how that whole trans transpired. I remember I remember running on the treadmill, and it's kind of like what Carrie was saying. I was like getting this, you know, flashback of they were it was a woodway treadmill. Remember, mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. no arms. You're you know, and Sal was like, get on the thing, and he just hit the button. He's like, run, and I'm like, really? <laughs> and I'm just you know in this thirty pound wig with my thigh nylon things you know slithering down my legs and but it get you know just like carrie said when i finally saw that i'm actually running and there's a background i was like oh my gosh this actually this looks kind of cool you know this is yeah you, awesome. you feel like forrest gump yeah. you feel like forrest gump <laughs> here, you know? for, for me i didn't realize i was as, as tall as that uh <laughs> so when people meet me they they're kind of disappointed when they see i'm not like Seven foot tall. Yeah, I was disappointed <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, I'm disappointed. I said, I do not remember him looking that tall in the chair. <laughs> Well, I'd, say, uh, I'd say movie magic, but it is the magic of gaming <laughs> for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, when I first saw it, I was kind of like Carrie. I said, Oh, this is this is cool. Okay. And then we, uh, years later, I said, I don't need a funeral anymore. All you have to do is bring in the damn video game. There you go. That's mm -hmm. it. You don't need no cremation. You don't need my memorial. Just bring in a couple of PS4s or 5s and put Jacks up there. Like, there you go. There he is. There I am. Keep playing me all day. I'm still dead, but that's all right. <laughs> I want to end it with that. cabinets. <laughs> it's Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3. <laughs> there we go. I wanted to say that um, when we uh, when we were first, you know, <clears throat> figuring the game out, we were, um, you know, shooting it for the first few days. Um, you know, we didn't really know too much about uh, computer stuff. So we kind of didn't know, you know, how this was even going to work. You know, you know, we saw John there with a camera filming us. And, you know, he would said, you know, throw a punch uh, and, and, and then like, you know, retract back or whatever and then throw it again or, or, or now throw a fist or whatever. Um, and then, you know, still standing there, you're like, well, how is this going to even work? So <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, well, we'll come over here by the monitor and I'll show you. So um, like I think one of the very first first things that I think I filmed was the cycle. And that was like the first thing I. 
where I was, you know, standing like in a profile. And John, oh, the first man. thing that John asked me was, when you're fighting someone, how would you stand? And so I, I did the, you know, like that. And then he, he, he would say, you're just moving too fast. Can you think you could cycle it? And I said, okay, well, I'll try to loop it somehow. So I would just do this. And then, uh, and, I, and I'm still trying to grasp the concept of how is this going to be a game? And he says, okay, we'll do that same thing. He goes, but now I just want you to, from that position, I want you to throw a punch. So I would just throw a punch from there. So at that moment, I'm like, so how are you going to use this, this, this video uh, digitization, this, uh, this, this uh, frame grab software or whatever? So he basically showed us that you can take, I think, videos like 30 frames a second. They would take like eight frames of it and yeah. they, can, they can loop, uh, you know, the, the cycle and then they can stack the, the one of me throwing the punch on top of that. And then with the magic of Ed Boon being the great programmer that he is, you know, he could just, uh, you know, you could tell the punch button and you press that button to call up that second animation of me throwing that punch. And then when you retract that button, it just goes back to the loop of me standing there doing this. And that's when John said, I he I says, that's, that's we what the game's going to be. By the hour. And the the uh, the computers kept crashing crashing because there wasn't enough RAM. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were like, "I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." And I'd be like, "That's fine, that's fine." I mean, we were getting paid by the hour, and I remember <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. Went, like 16 hours. And, and they were feeding us, right, Carrie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they were feeding well. us. It was pizza. it was great. Lots of pizza. All the free all the free video games you could play too. That was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the Speed like Racer quarters. game when I was in back. Was oh yeah. Back yeah. Back yeah. yeah, they were ahead of their time. Their com the computers couldn't even catch up, catch up with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, like I tell a lot of kids, I said, this was before Adobe, before CGI. I said, remember, we had pages of sell this pages. Beep, 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 mm -hmm. beep. I said, all this stuff y'all see? No. I said, well, I didn't have a pager, us, John. When they told us to slow down, it was like. You were too cool, Brian. I didn't know I was a, a, a doctor. Okay. You had a brick doctor. phone. You doctor remember that phone brain. you used to have? What was it? You had a brick phone. You remember? Was it the AT did I have a brick phone? Motorola? You did. You had a brick phone. And you're what, is in that? What, what is that? What is a brick phone? What the hell is a brick phone? The, the, the gray AT and T brick phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the one that uh, John Jax uh, is talking about, like the, the, the big chonky boy yeah, <laughs> with like the yeah. giant yeah. antenna. Wow. Yeah. Wait about fifteen. I think that was fake. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't go anywhere. Uh, the prop phone. <laughs> so our next question, this one is coming from Dante. Oh, we were sort of talking about this uh, in our, our pre-show to an extent. What is your favorite non-Mortal Kombat video game? Pac-Man! Miss Pac-Man! <laughs> Boom! Donkey Kong! Donkey Kong. With, the, with the turbo speed on it! So I can go fast. <laughs> Donkey Kong, Tempest, Pac-Man... Stargate. I'd probably NBA have to say Jam. Mario, Mario Brothers since NBA Jam, uh, that's great probably game. the game yeah. I played the most. Yeah, Mario. yeah, me too. Mario Brothers for me. I always liked Time Crisis when we went to the movie Ooh. theater. I loved Time Dig Dug. Pac-Man too. I was a big Pac-Man fan. Yeah. yeah. Pac-Man was the game. Dig Dug, Zaxxon. Those are great games. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how many of those were uh, midway games back in the day. I'm just like, oh, keep it on brand. I see. <laughs> War Gods. Oh, War Gods. wow, that's yep. one Brian, I don't did hear you do very War often. I was I was in War Gods. Yeah, I played Warhead in that in that one. Did you really? Yeah. Wow, I was bad. That was a good one too because they painted the whole they painted that whole uh, costume on me, and then they realized it wasn't showing up, so I had to go back and refilm the whole thing. So that was going back to what Carrie said. I got paid double for that, so. <laughs> I like that Revolution X game. Yeah, I know someone who's in that game. I, I, I just <laughs> Stop this nonsense now. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> whips head over. I don't know. Those are those are all some solid choices. Uh, a lot of a lot of bangers in there. <laughs> so thank you for that one, um, man. Now I just want to do some some NBA Jam. That's always been one of my my personal like go tos, especially with friends. Um, so next one is from Roxy. Uh, what was your favorite line to record? So 
uh, I know, I know. In the mo- for the most part, uh, you guys were mostly just doing the, uh, the 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 motion. But any any particular things that really like popped out that you really love going back to? Now, do it's they so have to be? Li- do they have to be lines in the game, or they could be lines when we did filming of acting? Yeah, we I'm will sorry. count that for the purposes of this question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Leah knows this one, right? Come on, Leah, let's do it. Do what? your line. What's my line, John? Oh, here we line. go. <laughs> Oh, What's my line? Sir, a mortal has entered the temple of slaves. A mortal? Yes, a mortal. Go, he Rich. Is, he is headed for the gates of immortality. A mortal? A mortal? Wait, what but the hell is my mortal. line? But he's oh, just yeah. mortal. Do not question me, Serena. And more importantly, do not fail me. We have toyed with the ninja long enough. Hey, don't call me a ninja, okay? Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> greetings. Greetings, John Turk, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, that was great. Oh, man, we had so much fun we working so on much uh, fun. mythologies Oh, with yeah. uh, Leah and John. Oh, my God. We just had a blast. It was I the couldn't best. remember. Every time I was with John, I was like, what's my line? He's like, oh, <laughs> I should have got paid double. Much fun for me. I was pregnant with twins, so. <laughs> I, don't yeah. think, I don't think I had any lines. I think they dumped over my, my stuff. No, Carrie's line is, he's definitely immortal. Yeah, and I had to feed her yeah. her line. Yeah. <laughs> and you said, I'll inform Quan Chi. Yes. And then and and something right. else. Yeah. Yeah, I actually went into the sound booth and did sound effects. So did I you? went in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah, I did too. Yeah, with and Dan I did, um, they had oh, me do finish him. And I remember saying a couple of the lines that are in the game. And I was in that, uh, it was in the back room there. And, um, just simulating getting hit punches. I remember saying finish him and doing saying a couple other the, the key phrases um, during the game, but I actually went into the booth for that. Uh, yep. I can't remember if it was Mythologies or three or one of them. I can't remember which one, but yeah, I for one I did that. I went in there and like if someone hit you went, ah, ooh, 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 like you did stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, John, uh, what about what about you up there, <laughs> John Jacks? <laughs> any any particular memorable yeah, lines yeah. or, well, or the one I like was them? gotcha. <laughs> That's yes. the only one. Anything else doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, gotcha. <laughs> then, yeah. Listen, listen. But that's that's just one of those things. Who, I mean, you know, John would pull me aside, and you know, they would just ask me to say something. I never knew what was in the game, what was not in the game. You know, so, you know, they said, well, how would it sound if you got punched? I said, well, who's punching me? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> you know, where are you punching me? <laughs> okay, so, but other than that, no, as far as going into the, the booth itself, no, that was all of them. Mine was always ad lib on the side somewhere, just standing and hanging around, and we were just, you know, a lot of people never understood that this game never really had what they do now with storyboards and this whole process. I said, no, we were a bunch of friends throwing shit at the wall to see what stuck. <laughs> okay. So whatever ended up in the I'm like, oh, they actually put that in the game. Okay. <laughs> actually, actually, you just, I, I'm sitting here thinking, and, and, and I don't know why I forgot this, but um, I, I, I would basically have to say the line, get over here. Because yeah, uh, the, you. yeah because you. Um, it obviously everyone knows that the line was uh, get over here was Coming was uh, clutch. Vo- That's the signature of the game. Yeah, that was voiced by Ed Boon. But before it even got to that point, you know, I was with Daniel the day that he filmed uh, for Scorpion, and um, you know, I had and everyone here's heard this story. You know, I, I wanted weapons to be in this game, so I, I told Tobias, I said. You know, are we gonna have any weapons in this game? Because it would be pretty cool. And and Ed Boon wanted to have a like kind of like a like a Wonder Woman lasso that could be like wrapped around someone, and you could like pull the person with the lasso. But Danny's like, no, 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 I don't want any like Wonder Woman lasso. I'm not doing that. And then I told Danny because I, I said, I said, D- don't you got a weapon in your bag? Because we used to have like martial art bags. We would practice, you know, all the time. And in his bag, he had this dagger with a rope attached to it. And I said, you know, I said, give me that thing for a second. I said, why don't you just take this thing and just throw it into the guy and let it, it'll just get stuck in his chest. 
And then I did this hand over hand motion like this. And I said, then you just pull them back and you tell them to get over here and you, and you, and you do an uppercut. And, and those three words just get over here. That just, I mean, it just came out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Cause it's just, I mean, what else are you going to say after you stick someone in the chest with a, with a dagger? You're going to, you're going to tell Sorry. them get over here, you know? So, um, <laughs> I, I demand I guess, your presence in this spot at yeah, this exact like, moment. You know, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not going to say like, stay over there. I'll come over by you and I'll take care of you. You know, mm -hmm. no, you're going to say, get over here. And I just coined that phrase right then and there. And then uh, a few days later, when we went back for some more filming, they already had like Ed, like his voice, you know, like get over here. Like you it's just, man, you know, it, it's just awesome. Yeah, and I, I was gonna. This ties perfectly to a follow up. I was gonna, you know, say to uh, to to John Jacks, uh, you know, is sometimes the the best lines are the ones that get improvised. Uh, you know, this is just, you know, this is true across uh, all forms of uh, storytelling. So these these two anecdotes really just kind of prove that. <laughs> so thank yeah. you very much for sharing those. Uh, so we have time for a couple more questions. Let's see what we have next up. Oh, oh, this is so good. This one is from Mikey. Do you have a favorite finisher <coughs> or friendship? <laughs> My friendship is kind of mm. funny. It was just in between shots. I didn't know the camera was even going on. Oh, God. And I was just looping <laughs> around and, you know, doing this thing. And just being a goofball. And they thought it was pretty funny. And then they didn't even tell me they made it a friendship until I saw it in the game. And then I just cracked up. It was hilarious. <laughs> That's a beautiful Easter egg right there. If I ever yeah. heard one, <laughs> I think my friend, my friendship is the goalpost, right? Is that is that it? Yeah, I think it's the one with the like the hovering and uh, all this, all this like very cutesy imagery, if I recall correctly. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was kind of similar. It's just like that. That was the thing that was so great about you know us being able to kind of fill in these. You know what? What would it look like if you did this, and what would it look like if you did that? And that's really what made the. the yeah, it's all ad lib. I mean, yeah. Mine just came over. They said, and there was a bunch of them. Like, what the, what the hell is that? Well, what's that, John? Is that you just taking off your clothes? What is yeah. that? <laughs> well, I was a stripper back in the day. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, just a collaboration. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody collaborating on the fly, uh, like you were saying, um, is the success of this game. Just so many talented people coming together and having a great time, having fun, and coming up with, like, really cool ideas. And it was a really cool atmosphere, comfortable. You know, it wasn't, you know, we, we sometimes it's like you're not even going by, like, a script. It's just coming up with cool stuff. And um, that's the really great success to this game. I like Otherwise, the double like Dutch it. jump rope. <laughs> did, you, did you do that, John? Did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> the double Dutch I jump saw rope. that one time, and I'm like, yeah. that's John Turk. Okay. I know Kano doesn't have a friendship, but I think Baraka, he gives mm -hmm. a gift, gift to someone. That's true. Yeah, that, was no that was Noob Sabot. Okay. The double dutch jump rope. <laughs> it's a quality one there, um, mm -hmm. Brian. I know we're waiting on uh, on on your favorite finisher or friendship. <laughs> Probably the hammer uh, hitting with the hammer, but I don't I don't remember that. I, did I have a friendship? I don't remember that. Probably not. <laughs> did Chow kind of have a friendship type Brian thing? Brian has no friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, His only friend I've is the hammer. All my friendships. <laughs> He beat everybody down with that hammer, see? <laughs> hard, to, hard to keep friends around when, you know, you're squishing their, their melon with a mallet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gallagher on them. <laughs> um, did did Shao kind of have a friendship? I don't, I don't remember if he did. I don't, I don't I'm pretty sure really that was know. one of the few exceptions for, for the friendships. Uh, if yeah. anyone anybody? in the chat knows better, please correct me because this is just all. Where's Justin? Not... Where's Justin at? He always pops in yeah, somewhere Justin right around here. Everything. Yeah, he knows everything. Yeah. Wherever, wherever. <laughs> Justin Daring, where are you, Justin, you know, when we need which, you? Which Justin are we talking about? There's two Justin Daring. Both of them. <laughs> right. yeah. Both yeah. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Justin. One and Justin, too. And then there's yeah, Dustin. Exactly. Justin, Justin, and Dustin. Exactly. 
So if Justin, Justin, or Dustin are in the chat <laughs> and would like to, to <laughs> chime in and correct this, please let us know. And uh, yeah, <laughs> sign it with hammer. <laughs> that way we'll, we'll know to, to pick it out if we still have time, because we are almost out of time, but we have enough time for at least one more wonderful question. Let us see what we have here. Oh, oh, this is going to get real interesting real fast. This one is from Tony. Out of all the characters that this panel has portrayed, who would win in a battle royal? <laughs> Shao Kahn, because he's seven foot tall. A battle royal. Okay. Sonia. Sundown. Somebody, somebody. Uh, sorry. Shao Kahn I'm going to say Shao Kahn. <laughs> I'm going to get up here. I think the I fans would be everybody. better to answer this than us. Yeah, yeah, it's going to have to be the fans. Right? No. Yeah, this is one for the fans to answer. John Tobias told me that Sonia was the strongest character in MK3 if you played her right. He told I me the same thing, so I think he lied. Mel is the strongest female character. Mm -hmm. I don't I've heard from many fans, Jax has whooped everybody's ass all over the place. But Jax is a gentleman, so I'm not going to beat up my ladies here. So I'm like, I am not gonna win that one. I'll tell you who will win because when I used to play Brian, and if Justin won is here, he knows that I just played him when we were at Fayetteville. They had a oh, nice. stand up arcade. Sindel's got some serious, like I would do this drop bottom roundhouse where I just kept tripping, shouting <laughs> over I think and I, over. I think I won it. I think I won the arcade though. I've seen that. Didn't I win? Didn't I win that game? No, I, I won always. I don't think so. I think I'm gonna win that one. Always, Mario. I think you should put us in the ring. All right. Well, <laughs> there we go. That's our. That's gonna be our our, our bonus feature. We're just gonna oh, do that all would that. Be a hell of a one. <laughs> Get over there. Oh man, you know if uh, if in a future installment uh, they they put in like an actual battle royal mode, which. God, I would love to see how that gets done for a Mortal Kombat game. We'll definitely make sure to invite you all. Maybe we'll do it at one of the, the live shows. We'll just have everyone mm -hmm. gather around, pass pass around some controls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we are going to wrap it up right here. Until next time, as always, please stay happy, stay healthy, stay informed, and we'll see you again soon at GalaxyCon. Take care, everyone.